and some of them are also non specific now if we talk about pathogenesis uh, pathogenesis actually shouldn't be pathogenesis anyways it will be pathogenesis now for the pathogenesis part uh, they can cause major three different type of infection one is the venereal infection which is also called the sexual infection is called sexual kind of infection or sexually transmitted disease another one is the congenital which is from mother to infant from mother to infant and third one is the non venereal which is a, a non sexual interaction a disease so let's begin first one is a venereal uh, interaction and the disease is called syphilis right now syphilis is a kind of sexually transmitted disease or std and it is uh, it is it, it is providing one of the dangerous kind of symptoms uh, about all rest of the sexually transmitted diseases right now usually this kind of bacteria they enter through uh, the aberrations uh, of the mucosa or skin so any kind of wound or any kind of burn and injury through those injury and burn or wound they can uh, make uh, their entry and then if they require the incubation period of about one month so it can be 10 to 90 days so you can see one to three months one to three months uh, can be there okay and their infectivity is maximum during the first two year of the disease and primarily secondary and early latent stages so usually when they infect us they require the development time for one to three months but up once after they develop once after they are inside the host uh, it is extremely difficult for us to kill and remove them throughout uh, this whole body and the actually we, we uh, usually the symptoms at the very beginning are very very milder so we, we uh, most of the time couldn't get the disease or couldn't get or couldn't be diagnosed very easily so we can get the visible kind of symptoms after two years of the disease when the disease is go going really higher and there are a lot there are a lot more uh, treponema pallidum present in different regions of our body right and they are having several different stages of infection so this kind of infection is not very rapid they are they are kind of chronic they are kind of systemic and very very slow so they are having four different stages primary secondary latent as well as tertiary so four stages so this is a four stage of disease four stage disease so let's talk so the stages of venereal syphilis so primary syphilis is the first stage where we are having uh, so as you can see the, on the genital regions they are kind of chancre and the painless uh, regions and and what we can see here is that we are we can see the lesions and also blood is coming out and they are having inflammation and all these things will be go going on like that okay and they usually this kind of this kind of wound uh, internal wounds or, or external wounds they can be healed uh, spontaneously on their own almost in one month they are they are healed so auto healing so we won't require anything to heal them so this kind of scars are generating they're healing on their own so uh, it will uh, look the symptoms will look like that it is causing some kind of milder infection so we won't bother about them much but once it is developing once it is taking its own time and it is moved towards the secondary kind of syphilis where it is most infectious among all the stages now it's set in for two to six months after the primary lesion heals so lesion is healing lesion is already healed so people thought that uh, infection is going away but actually uh, this triponema pallidum is going too far right now and they're causing the most infectious stage and they're causing this uh, kind of symptom and what they are doing in this case is that uh, uh, they are actually degrading all the tissues inside from inside right so they start to form skin rashes now this is the rashes are rashes are the typical symptoms for the secondary syphilis in this case and again by looking at the rash uh, nobody can tell what kind of disease it is having because it, it, the rashes are very simple very small kind of rashes people think that this is uh, due to some uh, something and they will be healed on their own and some of the rashes also heal on their own on the body but it will also causes mucus patches in the uh, oropharyngeal area and uh, candyloma at at different mucocutaneous junctions where, where uh, mucus membrane is there and this kind of swelling and everything is going on like that so secondary syphilis is a kind of very infectious because this this kind of indications by rashes and uh, mucus uh, degradation and all this thing is telling us that the triponema pallidum is dividing it is growing in very rapid phase now after that it will it can convert itself in latent syphilis where where it stays for longer period of time after many years it can return right so after having the secondary region sometimes some people uh, 
uh, having difficulties in the secondary syphilis because they are really really dangerous uh, and very bad also if if uh, at this stage uh, sometimes uh, from this stage it can go to latent syphilis where again for longer period of time the whole infection kind of sleeps right after certain years like after 10 to 20 years it again revives back and it can cause another range of uh, array of diseases like cardiovascular lesions and aortis aortis aortitis actually aortitis means a kind of disease in aorta so it you can see the cardiovascular lesions are kind of life threatening in these cases because it is causing your heart uh, to slow down and it is causing very dangerous situations in the tertiary syphilis but tertiary syphilis at uh, usually results in very old ages because as they are a uh, very longer period duration of uh, sleeping of this disease almost 10 to 20 years right and it, they can have late tertiary disease where you are having neurosyphilis this is a kind of dangerous situation you should die in this case actually because because there are neurosyphilis a kind of a uh, kind of making a uh, necrosis in the nerve cells and nerve tissues and they will start to die simple as it is so here we can see uh, the lesions, uh, the, the scar that is formed in the very primary syphilis. As you can see here, scars are starting to start to form and these kind of scars uh, will heal on their own. And after a certain time, this is another rail of scars, okay, as you can see. And this is another kind of thing that uh, usually this kind of scar originated in uh, genitals for male and female both. But sometimes it can also be generated in other regions like as you can see in hands like that, right. And this is a kind of symptoms like secondary syphilis because in secondary syphilis it start to form rashes and also it start to have a kind of lesions in different region in, in mucosal region and other regions. So it's a kind of uh, uh, the thing that the different regions of your body is a kind of swell up, right? So if we draw all of these things together, it will look something like that. So in the primary syphilis, it is hard, it is painless, sharp borders, and no no problem is going on. Everything is fine. The people is fine. After that, in the secondary syphilis, the major thing is rashes. It is telling you that uh, your inside you, the triponema pallidum is dividing and growing very rapidly, and it is providing the symptoms. Hey, just try to try to be safe otherwise I'll kill you but people won't understand because these rashes will go away eventually but after all these things when they finally grow and divide it can turn into latent phase for 10 to 20 years but after that time when they come back again the tertiary phase it will almost kill you because it is causing the lesion in your uh, heart as well as it can cause neuro dysfunction neural ne necrosis now the second type of disease we are going to talk is congenital syphilis. Remember there are many types. There are non-congenital, there are congenital, uh, sexual or non-sexual and non-venereal. So we have already talked about venereal. This is congenital syphilis. This is also syphilis. But this is not, con uh, this is not uh, sexual syphilis. It is not affecting your genitals. It is uh, affecting different region of your body. Now this congenital kind of syphilis is kind of disease which is coming from mother to mother to infants. Right? That's why they are called as congenital, mother to infants. Okay. Now why? Because if the mother is infected somehow, when during the birth, uh, the baby is also getting infected. Right. So it is moving from mother to fetus via the placenta, placental transfer. Right. And it is actually going to occur after fourth month of the uh, gestation. Right. And cl clinical features are keratitis and shuttle shaped nose. As you can see, both of these things you can look at it. Shuttle shaped nose is that it is kind of swollen like that. And we are having also Hutchinson's teeth, which is a typical characteristic of congenital syphilis. Right. Though the this kind of uh, symptoms they are not severe, they, they are not life threatening uh, that much, but still they are bad, they are not good because it will uh, long last, it will long last through your life and all these things. So that's why they are bad. And third kind of disease is non-venereal syphilis. Uh, it, it usually occurs in doctors or nurses, rarely by blood transfusion. Blood transfusion would cause this kind of disease, but it actually occurs in it actually found in doctors and nurses because when they are uh, when they are uh, taking care of patients, in those cases it can be transferred by any means because if the doctor or nurse having any kind of opening, opening means wounds in their body. Uh, if they are having uh, any kind of uh, say scars, any kind of uh, burning or injuries in their skin and other regions. So in those cases, triponema can easily enter through and after entering, 
they can again cause this disease so as this disease are not caused by sexual transmission we call them non venereal syphilis now the treatment now the penicillin is the obvious treatment for uh, Tryponema pallidum this is the drug of your choice usually the penicillin G so let me write usually penicillin G is taken which is a new kind of penicillin we, we know and except for that what we can do at the second line we can use erythromycin uh, we can use uh, tetracycline or doxycycline whatever kind of shuffling dose we can use all this thing together but in case of the neurosyphilis which is a tertiary or third degree level of uh, sexual syphilis we need to use safe triaxone which is the third generation cephalosporin drug third generation cephalosporin drug okay and finally the prevention and control uh, we need to have a proper screening that means all pregnant women at first should have a prenatal visit and individuals with other STDs should be screened very uh, carefully and then reporting of the contacts and tracing the sexual pattern is very very important if we track those sexual pattern by reporting the contacts then uh, we can uh, control the spread of sexually transmitted diseases and we need to be very very careful about choosing our sexual partners so that's why education plays vital role it is very very important in this case so that's in a sense is uh, triponema and I hope that's helpful